The Grey Hussars is a Loyalist Codex Divergent Space Marine chapter from the 26th founding. They descend from the gene line of Rogal Dawn, Primarch of the Stoic Imperial Fists. This chapter, unlike other Imperial Fist successors, doesn't associate themselves with the parent chapter, most of the founding officers being drawn from the zealous Black Templars chapter and inherited many traditions from their progenitors. The Grey Hussars prefer mobility, operating a larger Astartes fleet that is continuously enlarged which it operates from without a homeworld. The Grey Hussars are zealous in their enforcement of the Council of Nikea, accepting no psychers within the chapter or upon their recruitment worlds, often rounding them up from across the Saras sector and placing them upon the black ships. They are seen often going into the aid of campaigns that are seen as beneath most older chapters, viewing every asset as important and will aid based only upon proximity to them. The Codex Astartes is barely noticed by the chapter, choosing to follow the example of the Black Templars. Because of this, the chapter is believed to exceed the chapter limit, and only the Grand Master knows the true numbers of Astartes within the chapter, but believed to not exceed 1400 Astartes, but the Inquisition has not been able to make an accurate report. The Grey Hussars are known for being a very cooperative chapter, always willing to work with other Imperial forces, especially with the Astra Militarum and Planetary Defense Forces personnel, oftentimes viewing human life as immensely valuable and will attempt to evacuate civilians before seeking glory. Their operational zone is in the Ultima Segmentum, mostly around the Saris sector, but oftentimes is seen in the realm of Ultramar and its surrounding sectors. Rarely has this chapter operated out of the Ultima Segmentum, but they did attempt to reinforce Armageddon during the Third War of Armageddon and attempted to reach Cadia to defend it from the onslaught of Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade and the formation of the Great Rift. There have also been reports of the Grey Hussars being spotted in Segmentum Solar to meet with the Dark Angels or one of their successors. The Grey Hussars have a mixed relationship with the Inquisition, having much disdain for the Inquisitors of the Ordo Astartes and will outright be covertly hostile to them. The Ordo Hereticus is often avoided due to their mixed stances on the idea of Astartes' chapter following the Codex. The Ordo Zenus and Melius Inquisitors tend to have more favorable relationships with the Grey Hussars due to their easy cooperation in the extermination of the forces of Chaos and the Zenus. The Grey Hussars are a young but proud chapter. They were born in an unstable time of constant war, the agents of chaos striking out in fury against the forces of the Imperium. The Orcs are constant menace and the Tyranids yet to make themselves known to the Imperium. The Grey Hussars were born in the 26th founding 738M41. The Lords of Terror requested that experienced Astartes lead this new chapter, once skilled in fleet-based warfare, to reinforce the void defense of the Ceres sector. High Marshal Ludoldus offered up a Castellan, Halius from Sturmwalden, as the first Grand Master of the Grey Hussars. Several sergeants from the Black Templars were brought along to form the new officer class to lead the young Sons of Dawn. Over the short period of operation, they have taken part in many campaigns across Ultima Segmentum, standing as one of the few guardians of the Saras sector and one of the most valuable assets of the region. The first major campaign was against the Tau Empire in the Damocles Crusade. When the young Xenus Empire became known to the Imperium, the Crusade was called against the new threat. The Grey Hussars were only a few years old and a chapter with no notable battles or moments of glory behind its name. Unlike the other chapters that joined in the Crusade, the Grey Hussars were lost in the cast shadows of far older chapters, including their parent chapter, the Black Templars. Lord Knight Riley von Gergen, former sergeant of the Black Templars and commander leading the 2nd Division, decides to go his own way separate from the other Imperial forces, wanting to prove his new chapter's glory by going and preventing the expansion of the Tau to a lone agri-world in civil war where the pro-Tau forces were being routed by the Loyalists before a cry came out that the Tau were landing forces. The world of Unilari III would become a battlefield from which the Grey Hussars would be scarred, losing 70 of its 300 Astartes' complement and having to retool its approach to war from the close quarters doctrine of their parent chapter. Lord Knight Riley von Gergen would bring back his reforms and his new doctrine of the Second Division to the rest of the chapter. 
The planetary defense forces fought with every fiber of their being beside the Grey Hussars, fighting with bitter determination, earning them much respect from the Grey Hussars and the honor of being the first recruitment world while the second division retreated to lick its wounds and return once it was back to full strength. But by the time that would happen, the crusade would end. 999 M41 in the wake of Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade, the 4th Division attempted to reach Cadia in time to join in the defense, but increased warp activity made travel harder. The Grey Hussars barely translated out of the fringes of the system when Cadia broke and they were engaged by the Chaos Warfleet. They engaged in a fighting withdrawal. The Holy Intent Battle Barge, along with the large retinue of Astartes vessels, three refurbished Lunar-class cruisers and the remnants of the Imperial Navy fought for three days to retreat from the system while endless waves of chaos ships hurled themselves at the Grey Hussars. They retreated from the system with the burning surface of Cadia, giving them its farewell. Also 999M41 with the formation of the Great Rift and the Grey Hussar's position within the Saras Sector, they felt the wave of Chaos strike deep into their lines. Chaos Warband struck deep into the Saras Sector, and the Plague Marines of Nurgle, in the infamous Death Guard and the Black Legion forces, struck through on their way to Ultramar. The recruitment wells that the Grey Hussars had sworn to protect came under assault by the forces of Chaos. Cultists, Renegade forces, Chaos Astartes, and all their bloodstained blades. Each division fought bittersweet conflicts, taking ever-increasing losses. Squires were rushed to full Astartes level before many were ready, diminishing the quality of the chapter every day. But every day they stood strong, oftentimes standing side by side with the Ultramarines and their successors in Ultramar when needed, putting aside rivalry for the greater good of the Imperium. 111 M42 after a century of near-constant war, the once oversized chapter was waving its strength. They were preparing on the creation of a fifth division, but most of those Astartes were forced to enter service in the other divisions to fill the depleted ranks. The chapter was cut down to 879 knights. The first division hit the hardest, with its entire first brigade wiped out, destroying a Death Guard warband on Titarius IX. The second Grand Master was slain by a World Eater Lord in the Battle of Helmes, 019 M42, before the Lord Knight of the Second Division, Riley von Gergen, slew him in turn, and having to take up the mantle of the Grand Master when he was solely nominated, being the most decorated and skilled warrior with the mind of a true leader behind him. He had been leading the chapter for the past century and was getting old, being one of the original Black Templars that became an officer in the Grey Hussars. The 2nd and 3rd Division had gathered over an agrivolt, Hularic III, used by the Grey Hussars as a recruitment world, was recovering from a Black Legion assault. The combined fleets of the 2nd and 3rd Division were rattled and on the brink, held together by the prayers of the Astartes and their serfs when the fleet of the Primarch, Rabuti Gilliman, arrived in the system with his fleet. The massive battleship, Macrag's Honor, came with a huge armada. Grand Master Riley von Gergen and his officer were requested to come aboard the battleship. The Primarch was proclaimed the leader of the Imperium, the Emperor's Holy Regent, come to lead them. With a bow, the Grey Hussar sealed their loyalty to their demigod, the Primarch Rabuta Gilliman. He awarded the Grey Hussar's efforts with 200 Primaris Astartes from the gene line of Rogal Dawn to continue their defense against the Dark Forces of Chaos, and when the Primarch's vessel continued on its path to Ultramar, the chapter kept their oath, assisting in the defense of the Saras Sector against the agents of the Runes powers. The Grey Hussars, after inducting the Primaris into the chapter, reinforced the depleted divisions of the chapter, and with the return of the Primarch and the relieving of the conflict, the Grey Hussars would be given time to rebuild. Over the next decade, they only engaged in conflicts with low mortality. The Primaris were slotted in without much struggle, taking little time to ensure they knew chapter's customs and found themselves in the Imperial cult. The most useful units from the Primaris were the Vanguard units, organizing them into their reconnaissance platoons to more efficiently conduct their role. The Grey Hussars are a proud chapter and view the forces under the banner of the Imperium as close relatives in association. They hold a professional and cooperative relationship with most chapters, willing to work with the one they feel are more orderly and ones that won't take the offense to how the Grey Hussars conduct themselves. 
Because of this, they tend to have close bonds with chapters that are either Codex Defiant or Codex Divergent chapters, as they view them as being intelligent enough to think for themselves, not being constrained by a book of guidelines, and do whatever is necessary to do their duty to the Emperor. The Sons of Dawn, which they share the same gene father, is seen on the outside as the closest chapters, especially with their parent chapter, the Black Templars, due to their zealous devotion to the Imperium above all. But also the Grey Hussars have had a uniquely close relationship with the Dark Angels and the rest of the Unforgiven chapters after the Grey Hussars discovered and returned some members of the Fallen to the Dark Angels and assisted in the capture of a Fallen Renegade warband. The Grey Hussars have heard tales of the Red Thirst and the Black Rage, and their overall lack of concern for much beyond their bloodlust, seeing the Sons of Sanguinius as dangerous to operate with and will actively avoid them. The White Scars were one of the first chapters to open themselves to the young Grey Hussars chapter and put their trust in them, teaching them in the strengths of combining bike warfare into their unit that now dominates as one of the core fighting doctrines of the chapter. The Grey Hussars never operated with the Iron Hands or any of their successors, but is distant from their unhealthy obsession with the machine, as they put it. The Grey Hussars and the Salamanders have never served together, but both value human life, not to the extent of the Sons of Vulcan, but respect for the chapter is high. The Grand Master Halius from Stamwalden has banned interaction with the Space Wolves for unknown reasons, but the current officers of the chapter heed the warning from the first chapter master. The Grey Hussars had successful operations with Ravenguard and their successors, with the Grey Hussars having some proficiency in stealth and aerial warfare. The Grey Hussars, due to them being Codex Divergent but heads with the Ultramarines, but have no established rivalry, only disagreements. In recent times, the Grey Hussars have often assisted the Ultramarines in the defense of Ultramar. The only thing that keeps some chapters from outright hostility with the Grey Hussars is the fact that they are known for viewing all the Primarchs as demigods within their version of the Imperial cult, oftentimes making pilgrimages to Ultramar to worship at the feet of then near-dead Primarch Rebooty Gilliman, and if operating with a chapter of different gene line, will offer prayers towards their Primarch from the chaplains. Not broken up like standard chapters because of their large numbers and constant crusade, the Grey Hussars are broken up into strike forces known as divisions. Calling their companies brigades, the Grey Hussars operate in strike force numbers. A demi company equivalent is the platoon, two to four squads. The squad is the smallest unit size, normally consisting of up to ten marines. Each division almost always operates separate from one another, rarely congregating together. Each division is responsible for its own recruitment and supplying of equipment from its own. Most of their equipment is manufactured from a surf class that live on the ships of the chapter. The chapter is in possession of a surprisingly large amount of contempted dreadnoughts, not using another pattern of dreadnought, believing that those who sacrifice themselves for the chapter deserve a dreadnought as close to their original body as possible, viewing the other patterns as crude and not deserving of their brother's entombment. The first brigade of each division is known as the Armored Brigade, possessing all the divisions Land Raiders and Razorbacks, most of the Dreadnoughts, several Thunderhawks and the Terminator veterans of the chapter. The other Astartes include a platoon of Jump Pack Assault Marines and a platoon mixed with tactical and Devastator squads. This brigade fills the role of the heavy assaults to break through enemy's line, wrap around and destroy enemies of the Imperium in an offensive role. In the case of a defensive battle, this brigade digs trenches and firing positions for their Razorbacks to act as a mobile, self-propelled artillery to support their serfs and terminators holding the line, while the assault and tactical marines will remain in reserve to counter enemy assaults. This brigade possesses the most veterans of the division. Most of the time, this brigade is always on board the division's battle barge. The second brigade of Grey Hussars Division is known as the Assault Brigade, or more informally, the Champion's Brigade, as its Martial Knight is the Emperor's Champion of the Division. They specialize in light infantry quick assaults. This brigade drop pods into combat zones to destroy strategic targets, establish landing zones, and be the first ones in the fray. If the campaign requires, once they initially drop, Thunderhawks deliver bikes and assault bikes, their dreadnoughts, if dropped with the rest of the brigade, will be evacuated back to the strike cruiser this brigade operates out of. Only in the 4th Division does the assault brigade operate from the battle barge. The third and final brigade of the division is called the Lightning Brigade. 
This brigade has oftentimes been mistaken as members of the White Scars for their preference for fast, bike-based warfare. During the Democles Gulf Crusade, the Grey Hussars had adopted the mass use of bikes and land speeders to overrun enemy positions and support their armored brigade by routing enemy forces in the field of battle. They have often been described as clouds bringing exploding clouds of blood and death to those who stand against the Imperium. They also have squads of jump-pack assault marines that use thunderhawks to drop and slaughter enemy positions. This brigade always operates from the second strike cruiser of the division fleet. Each division operates their own fleet. The flagship of the division is the battle barge, followed by true strike cruisers and 18 hunter-class destroyers. They also scavenge and use Imperial Navy vessels, abandoned and refurbished, possessing a diverse fleet able to take on most threats known to them. For this, the Imperial Navy have voiced concerns, but the Grey Hussars have a very favorable relationship with Battlefleet Ceres, always coming to their aid when called. The Emperor's Sabre is the battle barge that acts as a flagship and the fortress ministry of the chapter where the chapter master operates from. The Emperor's Sabre is often seen with one other division fleet, most of the time second or third division fleets. The Grey Hussars follow a style of combined arms warfare doctrine bent around fast assaults but can fit almost any environment thrown to them. Each brigade fills one of three roles. The Grey Hussars are complemented on their skills in integrating armored, lightning and drop assaults, blending the three tactics into their fighting mentality. Each brigade in a division is meant to work off each other. The 1st Brigade brings the armor and firepower along with a combination of Terminators, Assault and Tactical Marines equipped with heavier weapons. The 2nd Brigade are experts in drop pod assaults to destroy strategic targets and respond with fast infantry responses to enemy activity using a balanced array of heavy and light firepower. The 3rd Brigade is the fast attack expert to route enemy formations using bikes, land speeders and assault squads operating from Thunderhawks to strike at enemies before proper retaliation. The chapter reconnaissance platoons are left separate from the others as they are experts of stealth and perform the covert operations of the chapter often in support of the brigades but perform from the shadows. The reconnaissance platoons are the experts in the chapter in assassination, intelligence gathering, subterfuge, and naturally, they are the best snipers. Almost all wear camouflage cloaks for their theatre of operation to conceal their chapter's armour, being nigh invincible in any environment. The skill of the individual knight of the Grey Hussars varies, but like any chapter, they are experts at the art of war. They model themselves of an ancient elite light cavalry unit from one of ancient Terra's many Germanic kingdoms. They in turn adopted many of their traditions, one of which included pragmatism, efficiency and chivalry. They also inherited the tradition of swordsmanship from the Black Templars. The Knights of the Grey Hussars are expert duelists and battlefield swordsmen. No Hussar goes into battle without a blade, whether it is a chainsword or power sword. The chapter has a high amount of power swords that almost every knight of the rank of Sergeant Knight and up can equip one, unless they prefer a chainsword. Unlike the Black Templars, the Grey Hussars will not seek out melee, they are just always prepared. Seeking of personal glory is rarely a concern of the Grey Hussars, preferring to achieve glory as a unit. When drawing up battle plans, the Grey Hussars are known for having a keen eye for finding ways to assault an enemy as efficiently as possible. They hate needless waste. The Grey Hussars are one of the most zealous knightly orders of the Adeptus Astartes. The Grey Hussars follow their own doctrine of the Imperial cult, worshipping the Emperor as the master and god of mankind. Unlike most followers of the Imperial cult, the Grey Hussars aren't known for fervent prey, preferring to see the divinity and show devotion to the Emperor in every aspect of their lives. For this, the Grey Hussars live by a set tenets of humility, devotion and efficiency. Before every battle, the Grey Hussars always request that the Emperor guides their every action, as oftentimes most of the knights that had fallen in combat have been those who have neglected their trust in the Emperor. They also believe any form of waste is a sin, everything from food to combat needs to be efficiently used for whatever goal they had set. The chapter has adopted the practice of worshipping the Loyalist Primarchs alongside the Emperor. 
They hold their gene line of Rogal Dawn as their patron saint, and due to their operational zone being around the Saris sector, they oftentimes would cross into the realm of Ultramar, going to Macrag on at least pilgrimages each decade, so new knights may worship at the feet of a martyred Primarch of Robote Gilliman. Upon the revival of the Primarch, the Grey Hussars have rejoiced, devoting themselves to the Primarch of the Ultramarines, putting aside their differences with the Codex Astartes and the Ultramarines to follow the Prince of the Emperor. The Grey Hussars inherited many traditions of theirs from the Black Templar chapter, including the practice of the Emperor's Champion, the Knightly Order, Skill with a Blade. They have also detracted much from the original traditions. The Emperor's Champion position is no longer one that is appointed before a battle, but one held until death or promotion to Lord Knight. The Emperor's Champion is always the Martial Knight of the Assault Brigade of each division, currently with four champions. The Emperor's Champion is the most skilled swordsman of each division, and it is his duty to select an apprentice, normally the most prospective battle brother in the dueling rings. He will take him under his wing to hone his skill with the blade, so that he can best any champion on the battlefield. Upon the death of the Emperor's Champion, the apprentice must retrieve his master's armor and the black blade. In a special ritual, the High Chaplain, along with every Astartes, gathers in a cathedral of any local world to dub the new Empress Champion before brothers, humans and the Emperor. The Grey Hussars are enemies of Psychers. The chapter doesn't tolerate librarians, and the only Psychers allowed in the chapter are astropaths and navigators. On the battlefield, most Grey Hussars will attempt to slay Psychers on sight in the enemy formation. Oftentimes their reconnaissance platoons are responsible for the assassination of these targets. On the Grey Hussar recruitment worlds, the recruitment squads will organize the capture and placements of psychers onto the black ships, oftentimes taking control of the planetary governors to ensure the smooth process of that transition. The Grand Master position of Grey Hussars is the Chapter Master. Upon his death, the Council of Knights and entire chapter of the Grey Hussars congregate. The selection for a replacement is to host a duel between members of the Council of Knights. The competitors for all positions must be nominated by another member of the Council for the position, and aboard the Emperor's Sabre in the Sparring Hall, the Knights square off, paired off to duel until defeat, but not death, until there are only two. Whomever comes up on top will inherit the position of Grand Master of Grey Hussars. The Grey Hussars have a funeral ritual for every Astartes. Upon their death, their corpse will be preserved to return to their recruitment world. The brothers of his squad will take his body to a mausoleum constructed in his honor for everyone to see. If the body is unavailable, the Astartes will inscribe his name on a special wall, the Memorium of the Lost, in the reclusium aboard the Emperor's Saber. During the first campaign, the constant rain had trace elements of hydrocarbons. The rains of Unilari III were paint thinners that washed and smeared the heraldry. The constant need to hand paint the heraldry over and over again in stop the tradition of a knight painting his heraldry on by hand. The first act of a squire, dubbed to a full knight, is to paint the crosses upon his shoulder pauldrons, each one similar and near identical, but each one still unique from one another. The Grey Hussars, being a fleet-based chapter, doesn't have a homeworld to draw recruits from. They operate a series of recruitment worlds where they have a permanent outpost where a recruitment squad led by a chaplain process volunteers and conscript recruits, putting them through trials that kill the majority of neophytes. The chaplain subjects neophytes to trials of faith in the God Emperor, reinforcing their beliefs to push them beyond their human limits, while the two veteran marines push the bodies to the breaking points, killing many, and if the apothecary deems them worthy, he will heal them to continue their trials. Being the mounted knights of the Imperium, they must go through a challenge to mount one of the Death Riders modified Terran horses of Krieg. If they are able to mount and break the horse their first time, the Astartes will grant the neophyte great respect and rush him forward. Most neophytes die attempting to mount these steeds, and the one that survive will continue through the trials and have to do it again when done. If then they fail to mount the steed, the Astartes will kill the neophyte who failed the chapter despite all the effort they put into them. The neophytes who are able to mount the steed upon completion will be assigned by the chaplain to be a full battle brother knight of the chapter. They will adopt the title Squire and serve the knight and fight alongside him in combat until the knight deems him worthy to become a full battle brother. 
The Martial Knight and Brigade Chaplain must approve, and he will be dubbed as a full knight of the chapter before the statue of the Primarch, Rogal Dawn, and the Emperor. The Grey Hussar's gene seed is very stable and has never exhibited signs of mutation like most Imperial Fist's successors. However, they don't possess the use of two of the special organs produced by the basic Astartes genetic template. The Betcher's gland, which allows a space marine to produce poisonous or acidic spittle, and the Susan membrane, which allows an Astartes to enter a state of suspended animation.